yet through greed and ignorance we scar your world with plastic waste and throw so much away make us more like your son lord jesus christ treading gently on our common home and breathe your spirit on us that we may care more deeply for your earth we ask this through jesus christ our lord amen dear people of god greetings to each one of you in the name of our triune faithful god the theme given for our reflection this morning is creation proclaims the glory of god today is observed as the environment sunday and we are going to reflect upon this theme creation proclaims the glory of god i will be focusing on the old testament lesson which was read to us this morning from the book of proverbs chapter 8 verses 8 to chapter 8 beginning at verse 22 we will go till the end of the chapter this text is one of the loveliest and most important biblical texts that helps us to grapple with this question what is this world like how does this cosmos operate and this text is written as a poem as a speech offered by wisdom and wisdom as i said in my previous sermon in hebrew it is the word hokma and also it is known as sophia which is an active agent and an agent who makes this self announcement self communication about how wisdom was operative from the beginning as an agent of creation the wisdom identifies three relationships that are crucial to the working of the world firstly wisdom has a peculiar relationship with the creator wisdom has a peculiar relationship with the creator we read from the proverbs chapter 8 22 onwards wisdom is expressing this i was beside god from the beginning i was the master workman who did work along with the creator and wisdom brought delight to god wisdom brought joy to the creator wisdom is the one with whom the creator is well pleased and this is clearly demonstrated in this wonderful companionship between god and the wisdom the creator and the wisdom on the trinity sunday we have reflected that the apostles understood jesus christ as both sophia and as logos about whom we read in john's gospel chapter 1 verses 1 to 18 and the greek word logos is so rich that it has 108 meanings that one word so the apostle is kind of giving you an option you choose which interpretation you want to give to it logos is the very self communication of god the self announcement of god that god is entering the cosmos in order to take care and emancipate and empower and rejuvenate the whole cosmos so the christian theologians have tried to understand the wisdom mentioned in proverbs chapter 8 as the very personification of the lord jesus christ who was with god from the beginning a peculiar relationship between the creator and the wisdom hence we are asked by this text proverbs chapter 8 verse 32 onwards listen to me says wisdom listen to me and live a call to listen to wisdom the lord jesus christ and the second aspect is wisdom describes its relationship to all the creatures in the world it's not just wisdom was very close with god 
Wisdom also has a very close relationship with all creatures who come after the creation in the wake of wisdom. Not only the, all the creatures are after wisdom, but they are created in and through the work of wisdom. Thus the text tells us that before wisdom there were no deep seas, no springs of water, no hills, no fields, no bits of soil. It is the creator who creates with wisdom. He established the heavens. He made firm the skies above. He established the foundations of the deep. He assigned to the sea its limit. And, and God did all this. But wisdom was there with God and so is implicated in the act of creation and also in the sustenance of the creation. On this Environment Sunday, God reminds us that God is our creator. God is also the one who takes care of us through the journey of life. Hence, we are called not only to listen to the wisdom, but also develop a love relationship with wisdom. Thirdly, wisdom has a practical connection to human beings and who and how they live in God's created, well-ordered world. In fact, this whole chapter, which is a beautiful poem, is a summons to the whole humanity, the whole creation, to come to God and to learn prudence, acquire intelligence, which is to pay attention and to understand what God wants us to learn from his self-communication. The book of Proverbs, chapter 8, verse 32. The Bible says, And now, O my children, listen to me. Blessed are those who keep my ways. Hear instructions and be wise, and do not neglect it. Blessed is the one who listens to me, watching daily at my gates, waiting beside my doors, for whoever finds me finds life and obtains favor from the Lord. But he who fails to find me injures himself. All who hate me love death. The specific instructions, the practical implications of this invitation are, if we learn to respect the poor, the importance of generative work, the danger of the careless speech, the risk of unpayable debt, the hazard of having wrong kind of friends. These very specific forms of conduct will lead us towards death and decay. However, if only we listen to wisdom and engage in work, good speech, have good friends, and respect for the poor, and the counsel of wisdom will bring well-being to the community which wisdom guarantees it. In verse 14 of this chapter, the Bible says, God will give you counsel. In other words, God will help us what to do in difficult situations. God will give you wisdom how to do it. God will give you understanding why you do what you do and God will give you strength, the ability to do it. Jesus Christ, as the very embodiment of the wisdom of God, of the very power of God, he journeyed with the people of God while he was on this earth. And we read in the gospel lesson, when the disciples are traveling on that boat, when the water is getting inside and the boat is sinking, they cry out to the Lord, Master, Master, we are going to die. In Mark's Gospel, Jesus uses three words. Mark 4.39, peace be still. And in Luke's Gospel, those words are not there, but he rebuked the wind. And there was great calm. Jesus, 
who is the creator is able to give the command to the creation and they obey it. And the disciples, they ask this question, what manner of man is this? What manner of person is this? That even the wind and the waves obey him. The creation obeys the creator, submits to the creator, and experiences the serenity and the calm that comes to us. This morning on this Environment Sunday, God reminds us through his word that we are deeply interconnected with the creation. Our human lives are inconceivable without a deep and intimate relationship with the creation that surrounds us. We are not only interconnected, we are also interdependent. Our lives cannot be led as if we were autonomous, as if we can use our money and power as we want, how we want. That's why book of Proverbs says in chapter 8, verse 32, those people who live their lives like that, according to their own whims and fancies, will experience death early. They are inviting trouble. Many times, people of God do not heed to this instruction of wisdom. Instruction to heed the word of God, to listen to the voice of God and obey the word of God. Hence, we pay, pay the price of our foolishness. Foolishness is living against the grain of that moral coherence that wisdom guarantees. Foolishness is the assumption that we can do what we want and have what we want according to our money, power and influence without any check or restraint. It is foolishness which is leading us to the global warming problem. It is the foolishness which is enabling us to experience harsh climate. A climate which we have never experienced in our cities before. Dearly beloved, God is calling us to this responsible relationship with the nature where we would take care of our environment that surrounds us responsibly. While visiting Uncle Santiago once, while he was admitted in the hospital, he used to tell me, Pastor, I know every tree in Coles Park. I can name every tree in Coles Park and also those trees know me. And also in our campus. A person who had an intimate interconnection with the nature and everything that surrounded it. During coronavirus pandemic, while there was long queues for oxygen at the hospitals, people were literally begging for oxygen. When patients were being discharged, doctors gave them this one instruction. When you go back to your home, plant at least minimum 10 trees. Now that you realize the importance of oxygen, plant at least a minimum of 10 trees so that the coming generations will understand the important role that these trees play for our own sustenance. The psalmist says in Psalm 19 verse 1, the heavens declare the glory of God. The firmament proclaims his handiwork. And then in the second part of that psalm, the psalmist invites us to reflect upon the word of God and how the word of God and the world of God Together, journey together to experience the shalom in this world. Neglecting either the world of God or the word of God will lead us to chaos. And it is only in engaging with the world of God and obeying the word of God, we will be able to usher in the new heaven and new earth which Jesus came and inaugurated through his life 
through his ministry, to, through his death and through his resurrection. The work of the new creation has already begun in us. And God expects that through his ecclesia, this work of new creation should continue and that people should be able to experience the new heaven and new earth through the life of the people of God. May God give us grace that we would be responsible custodians of our own selves, our body, mind and soul, of our families, of our children, of our spouses, and also of the communities where God has placed us. So that through us, this vision of God's new heaven and new earth, which we read in Revelation 21, would truly become materialized right here in our here and now. May God give us grace. Shall we pause for a moment of silent reflection?